Welcome once again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 17. We're talking about Paul at Corinth. There's a lot of things that happen here, and so we're going to deal with a lot of different things. Let's get right into it. Verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. He found a certain Jew named Aquila, a man of Pontus by race, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. He came to them, and because he practiced the same trade, he lived with them and worked, for by trade they were tent makers. So we've got Paul, Aquila, and Priscilla, and they were all tent makers. This is one of the ways that we know what the occupation of the Apostle Paul was. Verse 4, he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded Jews and Greeks. Very important point here. And we read about this over and over and over again in the book of Acts. For those of you who have been following me through the book of Acts, you know how many times it says this. But for those who are watching for the first time, Paul always goes to the synagogue, and he always goes to the synagogue every Sabbath. It would be every Saturday, okay? So Paul celebrated the Sabbath. He celebrated the Sabbath according to the Jewish customs, just like Jesus did. Verse 5, But when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit, testifying to the Jews that Jesus... Yeshua was the Christ or the Messiah. When they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook out his clothing and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. When he shook his clothes out, it was a protest. It was a, it was a sign of utter disgust. I don't want even your dust on my clothes, okay? It's a, it's a sign of, of great protest, great disgust. And he says, your blood be on your own heads. In other words, because you are rejecting this message, you will die. And your death is not my responsibility. I will not take responsibility for your death. He departed there and went into the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his house. Many of the Corinthians, when they heard, believed and were baptized. This is very significant. We have the ruler of the synagogue coming to know Yeshua as the Messiah. Awesome. How did Paul preach here? How did he convince Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, that Yeshua was the Messiah? I guarantee you he didn't say we're not under the Torah anymore. I guarantee you he didn't say that, okay? Contrary to what a lot of Christians interpret his writings to say today. I guarantee you he preached a message from the scriptures that were written by Jews, from the Jewish prophets, in a Jewish culture, from the Jewish mindset, to Jewish people, about the Jewish Messiah, okay? So this is how Paul preached, and obviously he was producing some fruit here. Verse 9, The Lord said to Paul in the night by a vision, don't be afraid, but speak and don't be silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you. For I have many people in this city. He lived there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul in Achaia, the Jews with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him before the judgment seat saying, This man persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, If indeed it were a matter of wrong or of wicked crime, you Jews, it would be reasonable that I should bear with you. But if they are questions about words and names and your own law, look to it to yourselves. For I don't want to be a judge of these matters. 
So he drove them from the judgment seat. You see, Gallio recognized that the charges that the Jews brought against Paul was pretty frivolous charges. It was about words and about names, okay? Obviously, one of those names, if not the primary name there, was Yeshua. So Gallio knew here that what the Jews here were attempting to charge Paul with was very trivial things, very, you know, things that really didn't make much difference in the sight of Gallio. Verse 17, then all the Greeks seized Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. Gallio didn't care about any of these things. History tells us that Gallio was governor in the years 51 to 52 AD. That puts quite a very precise date upon these events. Once again, as we go, I encourage you to seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.